Good evening, Bahamas. Coming up tonight, could lockdowns be a thing of the past? What the Prime Minister has to say. Meanwhile, a call for the Prime Minister to look into claims of medical malpractice at PMH. Plus, another step to becoming a legitimate business for coconut vendors. news is brought to you by Alive. Welcome to Our News and thank you for joining us. I'm Kyle Joaquin. Three weeks after he announced an aggressive seven-day lockdown, Prime Minister Dr. Huber Minister suggested today that lockdowns may be a thing of the past for the country. However, as COVID-19 cases continue to rise in your providence, Minich urged Bahamians to be responsible and follow emergency orders. Here's Brittany McDermott. Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis says he doesn't foresee any future lockdowns, this despite rising COVID-19 numbers. The Prime Minister reasons that it's important for government to strike a balance between health and the economy. Speaking on the sidelines of a book of condolences signing for former Girls' Guide Chief Commissioner Clarice Granger, Minnis said health officials have done an excellent job in determining the areas that are seeing an increase in COVID-19 cases. No, I don't foresee um, lockdown. I think um, with the excellent job that the health professionals are doing. You must establish a balance between health and economy. Um, they're able and we're able to isolate and determine the areas that, um, that are having an a increase in numbers. And if we can isolate and determine those areas, then we can um, zoom in on those particular areas. His comments come three weeks after he announced the complete and immediate seven-day lockdown for New Providence. The move didn't sit well with residents who took to the streets in protest, which resulted in the lockdown ending one day later. And as the country continues to see daily increases in COVID-19 numbers, the Prime Minister says that's due to a lack of cooperation from the public. I think it's a lack of cooperation of individuals. Um, we have found instances of individuals who um, were positive or placed in quarantine. They were subsequently turned off the, the geofencing monitor and subsequently just go about their own business. Minister didn't stop there. He also called it irresponsible, charging that these individuals are putting thousands of other Bahamians and their families at risk. That's irresponsible and what they're doing is placing not only themselves in danger, but they're placing the entire future of the Bahamas and and their family, their kids, their children, etc. The current COVID-19 emergency powers order is set to expire on September 30th. When asked if he intends to extend the COVID-19 emergency period, Minna said he is being guided by health officials. He said government has been trying to ensure that the Bahamas is recognized globally as a COVID-free destination. For this to happen, he stressed that Bahamians must play their part. What we've always been trying to accomplish was that the Bahamas would be recognized as a COVID-free destination. And um, we thought that once we've accomplished that, our tourist product would have even gone through the roofs. The numbers that we've seen yesterday would have been minuscule to what we'd seen in the past. And um, the bah Bahamians, if they did their part, we can keep our islands recognized as COVID-free destination. Reporting for Our News, I'm Berthony McDermott. Well, progressive Liberal Party Deputy Leader Chester Cooper has called on Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis to launch a formal investigation into claims being made by mothers and patients of Princess Margaret Hospital. Cooper says the claims cannot be ignored and need to be addressed urgently. I'm sick and tired personally of Bahamian families saying that their loved ones died unnecessarily. We're hearing too many of these stories. Amid mounting claims about Princess Margaret Hospital, PLP Deputy Leader Chester Cooper says these families deserve answers. From a young mother who died shortly after birth to a woman who claims she lost her twins at the hospital, heartbreaking stories of loss continue to emerge surrounding care at the facility. And while Health Minister Renwood Wells says he's looking into those claims, Cooper says they require the urgency of the Prime Minister, who happens to be a medical doctor. And by him to launch an investigation as to what's going on, if he hasn't done so, if he doesn't have the information on the specific case, so that we can be satisfied, the public can feel assured uh, that the Ministry of Health and the government is providing the resources that's necessary to help us uh, uh, preserve our lives. The Public Hospitals Authority has not issued an official statement regarding the claims of malpractice. 
However, PHA Managing Director Catherine Weech has said a probe into all allegations is underway. Aside from the stories of loss, families have also come forward concerning the lack of communication after a loved one enters the hospital, some not hearing from their relative or given an update on their status. People are waiting for days on end to hear the status of their loved ones. They are unable to call in, they are unable to visit, and the process uh, in 2020 when we have technology is, is badly broken. It has to be fixed. It causes unnecessary stress. Cooper said the concerns cause one to raise questions about the hospital's capacity to deal with the surge in COVID-19 cases. Before we can get to start talking about the economy and reviving the economy, we want to make sure that there's adequate testing, there's adequate contact tracing, and there's adequate capacity at the healthcare facilities. A 34-year-old man was charged today in connection with the murder of a man whose body was found wrapped in a sheet off Bacardi Road. Charles St. Luke was arraigned in the magistrate's court following the death of Patrick Roll on September 5th. Roll's body was discovered on a track road off Bacardi Road wrapped in a blue sheet after police were informed that a murder may have happened in the area. Outside court, Roll's relatives shook their heads and shouted as St. Luke was escorted inside. St. Luke's attorney, Tonic Lewis, told the court that her client was made to participate in a suspect parade despite his refusal, citing the absence of his attorney. She informed Chief Magistrate Joy Ann Ferguson Pratt that he was dragged into the parade room. St. Luke was not required to enter a plea and will return to court on December 8th. After fighting for their lives during Hurricane Dorian one year ago, Abaco residents are now faced with thieves whom they say are hampering their rebuilding efforts. Here's Georgia Bain. The battle continues for Abaco residents one year after Hurricane Dorian destroyed their homes and left many with nothing. This time, they face a fight against rising crime. As residents struggle to rebuild their homes and businesses, these are seeking to take advantage of the situation. Abaco Chamber of Commerce Director Krista Albury said she had her home broken into three separate times in the past month. Crime in Abaco has reached unimaginable proportions. Um, I myself have had my home burglarized three times in the past month and a half. Uh, they have taken my generator, they have taken our tools that we were using in the rebuild process, chop saws, hammers, um, pry bars, everything that they'll probably go use to go and burglarize another home. Aubrey said what's shocking is the boldness of those committing these crimes in broad daylight, backing their vehicles into residence yards and loading them with stolen goods before taking off. Two weeks after that, our home was broken into again. Uh, they ripped the shutter off of one of our windows and uh, rummage through. There was nothing really inside the house at that point. We had already removed um, everything that was left inside the house. And then they came back a week and a half after that to rip the wire for the generator out of the wall outside so that they could hook up the generator that they had stolen from us. Louise Reckley and her husband have also been victims of theft. She says thieves stole a container of building supplies, including plywood and ice and water shields. We lost everything during Hurricane Dorian. Have to build from the ground up. And make my situation a little bit different. It's the day before the hurricane, my husband had a stroke, so he can't work. So this thing really bothered us. That we, someone donated the stuff to us, we put it in the yard. And someone came in the yard while we was home, took as many as they wanted, and they carry it. And that's really, it's a scary situation. Rackley said with many depending on the kindness of nonprofit organizations to donate supplies, it's a huge setback. Most of us not only lost our homes, we lost our jobs, businesses, so there really is no income. And it's only what, you know, the NGOs have blessed us with because I can tell you we have not received, most of us has, has not received anything from the government. According to Albury, at least 10 homes have been broken into this week alone. And at this point, residents are losing hope. At this point, Abaconians are starting to really feel a sense of hopelessness. We've lost faith in those who are supposed to be protecting us. Commissioner of Police Paul Roll has refuted reports of rising crime on the island and advised that overall crime in Abaco is down by 39 percent. It's a statistic that residents are now left to question. Reporting for our news, I'm Georgia Bain. Public school teachers around the country took a poll today to help determine whether they want to take industrial action. 
Bahamas Union of Teachers President Melinda Wilson says since teachers returned to the classroom on Monday, there have been countless issues from a shortage of laptops to the Internet and tablets being unsuitable to perform their duties. So the tools for virtual is a laptop, is internet connectivity, is Wi-Fi. If you want me to use my cell phone, then I need data. So we have major challenges. The teachers are frustrated. They feel as though they're being used by the Ministry of Education. The Ministry of Education is not receptive to the recommendations that the union is giving to them. Public schools are scheduled to open virtually on October 5th. National examinations are expected to resume next Monday, which Wilson also calls into question. She sent a stern warning to education officials that if teachers vote to take industrial action, the start of the new school year will not go as planned for the ministry. So we will hopefully have the information from our members as to what course of action they are prepared to take. And so I am guided by them as their leader. I ain't never scared and always prepared to lead. And so if the majority of the members say we will take industrial action, then that is what we're going to do. More news on the way, but here's a first look at weather with meteorologist Greg Thompson. Good evening, Greg. Thanks, Kyle. I'm meteorologist Greg Thompson with your first look at weather. Warm and humid conditions outside our studios. Temperatures settling into the mid-80s. 85 is our temperature right now under cloudy skies. Winds out of the east northeast at 5 knots feels like temperature around 90 degrees Fahrenheit. On our satellite, lots of showers and thunderstorms still across the Bahamas, a disturbance to the east of us providing most of that activity across the islands. That shower activity and thunderstorms will continue tonight through tomorrow. That's your first look at weather. Your extended forecast is still to come. All right, thanks, Greg. Still to come, the Prime Minister gives an update on Grand Bahamas International Airport. Plus, Arawak key vendors hoping to drive up slow curbside sales. That's coming up when our news returns. This is a huge deal. NFL Sunday Ticket is back only with Ram Trio. All day football, all day Sunday. Enjoy all the benefits of Trio with a huge extra. Never miss a game with NFL Sunday Ticket included in your Ram Trio bundle. All you have to do is opt in. TV, phone, and internet starting at just $99. Call 601-8992 to sign up now. Visit www.rav.bs slash promotions for details. One year after Hurricane Dorian ripped through Grand Bahama International Airport, Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis said he's optimistic that the deal to acquire the airport will be soon completed. His comments come three weeks after Tourism Minister Dionisio D'Agler said government has yet to complete the assessment to determine how that airport will be rebuilt. I'm hoping we can complete that very soon. We're, um, it's an ongoing discussion. I was in discussion with them last week and um, I I'm very confident. I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic. Minnis and other government officials recently toured the airport. He said both domestic and international terminals are near completion. As you know, you're seeing the completion of both the domestic and international terminals at this particular point in time. So that we have adequate spacing and accommodation for individuals to sit and do whatever is necessary. While well, our key vendors say they are looking forward to the return of visitors, this as they try to ramp up their curbside sales. Jillian Gray has more. Arawaki vendors say they're excited about the prospect of tourists coming back to their restaurants. This as they say it's been slow since they've reopened. I think the tourist is eager to get to the Bahamas. because There's no other destiny like the Bahamas. You know, so regardless of what measures they have to take, I think they'll be here. Um, we're definitely looking forward to our tourists coming back and we understand that, you know, the protocols make it difficult for travel. But again, too, we would be appreciative for anything we can get, because I think right now we are in that something better than nothing economy. On Monday, the Minister of Tourism said the tourism sector will reopen fully by November 1st and suggested that hotels could reopen as of October 15th. Owner of Andrus Hideout, Willard McKenzie, said while he is confident that the economy will bounce back eventually, things are tough right now. I know for sure that the economy will bounce back, you know. But as it is now, 
you know, things are slow. Arawaki vendors opened their doors for curbside service just over two weeks ago. They say historically, Arawaki is known to be a chill spot for Bahamians and tourists alike, and the curbside service has not fully caught on with their patrons. While business owners say they are grateful to be open, the limited business has caused some owners to cut back on staff. We have to have some type of dining, whether it's outside or in. But on this current part, I don't see how we could survive and need this. But we just pray and hope that in the next order, we will be allowed to do some type of outside or inside dining. But the fish rise the graveyard from that day to this day. You are owner, could only come out, probably go home with about 30 to $40 a day. You know, it's rough. That means if you have 15 to 20 staff, it's only you you're looking out for. You can't hire nobody. And we just want to do our part to contribute. Um, we want to do our part to keep everyone safe, but we want to make certain that we are also treated in a fair manner where we can do what other restaurants are doing so that we are able to, again, reach those sort of um, the revenue and be able to bring our staff back full force. Reporting for our news, I'm Jillian Gray. Government will extend the boundaries of the tax-free economic empowerment zone. Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis presented the boundary changes, explaining that the changes will now allow those who reside within the zones to expand their homes and housing developments duty-free and, in the case of businesses, pay no business license tax. The more depressed there is so as to help decrease their tax burden, allow them to expand their home development, build houses, etc., all duty-free. And um, in cases of business, pay no business licenses, etc. When our news comes back from the break, coconut vendors get training. Stay tuned. This is a huge deal. NFL Sunday Ticket is back only with Rap Trio. All day football, all day Sunday. Enjoy all the benefits of Trio with a huge extra. Never miss a game with NFL Sunday Ticket included in your Ram Trio bundle. All you have to do is opt in. TV, phone, and internet starting at just $99. Call 601-8992 to sign up now. Visit www.rav.bs slash promotions for details. You're watching Our News. Welcome back. A group of coconut vendors are making progress in their quest to become legitimate business owners. Here's Jared Higgs. Last week, we told you about 17-year-old Brandon Smith, a coconut vendor who was plying his trade illegally. Well, this week, Brandon is in a classroom getting training for his health certificate. He wouldn't be getting run from the side of the road from the police officer, see nobody harassing us. And we could just make our money and we ain't got a wipe with no one, no police officer, no nothing. Make a better life for myself. So I got to be on the show doing government activities. Smith and about a dozen other vendors are benefiting from the Ministry of Health Food Handlers Program. Many of the vendors were operating illegally and encountered law enforcement even after the Prime Minister announced plans to support the vendors through a grant program. 21-year-old Tatiana Bain is one of few women in the coconut business. She knows about the pressures of selling coconuts and life in general. I was working at Burger King, but I left. But I have a six-year-old son. So I have to provide for him. It's her child that encourages her to push through. I want him to be his own boss. Um, don't work for no one. Work for yourself. Some of you may remember Samuel Moss Jr. He was lost at sea in 2018 and was eventually rescued. A recent hand injury prevents him from fishing, his preferred line of work. On Thursday, he was also getting training. I don't want to get caught up in the system today. They have every young man today as like not trying or every young man especially if you grow up in the ghetto they have you as like a bad like he was a bad boy but not every guy that grew up in the ghetto or which trying to hustle and make an honest living is a bad boy so that's why you got to come do the right stuff the right way of course many coconut vendors were arrested and charged and had to pay fines sometimes as high as 800 dollars 
Those fines were often described as harsh by members of the public, but many have stepped up to help, like film director Candy Gibson and Torchbearers president Carlisle Bethel. The mere fact that this during COVID-19, young men and women in the classroom trying to bear themselves, I think, and all this was give God thanks, because if it wasn't for the police harassing, it wasn't for COVID-19, and it wasn't for the police harassing them, then they wouldn't have been here today. So God is good. God. There are people out there who start life at a different point than you, and you may have started with some privilege or some benefits that other people don't have. Right, and so I always, from I was as far back as I could remember, I always said, the blessings that the Lord has given me, I must use those blessings to help and assist and bless other people. Now, of course, entrepreneurship is important to these vendors, especially in the middle of a pandemic when many are jobless. Reporting for our news, I'm Jared Higgs. Thanks, Jared. Well, fighting an addiction can seem nearly impossible during a global pandemic, but for one man facing that reality, giving up is not an option. Chaz and Brown has his story. I'm not afraid to tell people, yeah, I'll call it on drugs. They say life always offers you a second chance, but 34-year-old Carlton Adderley has gone far beyond second chances. He has been in and out of rehab at Teen Challenge Bahamas for years. Adderley, who has primarily been living on the streets for the past decade, told our news team in late March that COVID-19 forced him off the streets and into the dorms at Teen Challenge's Marshall Road facility. However, he admits his addiction drove him to leave in the middle of the pandemic. Shortly after checking back into rehab, he shared his struggles and how the COVID-19 pandemic has compounded his problems. I have a addictive personality. Um, it's something that I really, really don't want to do, but then, you know, sometimes it's, I just allow it to really take control of me instead of me having control of the situation. Adderley says when he left Teen Challenge during the first wave, he tried to change his habits as best he could, staying out of abandoned homes used as drug houses and opting to sleep on friends' couches. However, Adderley says the recent spike in COVID-19 cases during the second wave pushed him to check back into the Marshall Road facility. He says what keeps him coming back is the fact that they have never turned their backs on him. I had a lot of time to really think on what, what it is, Carlton won for Carlton. Eric Fox only could carry me so far. Eric Fox should only could guide me. I have to compliment oneself and say to myself, if someone, I got someone on my side who won the best in me, I got to want the best in myself. And I don't want Mr. Fox feel like I don't think about these things. Adderley adds that he is not the only one to face struggles during the pandemic, but he says now is not the time to dwell on failures, but focus on getting through it. Even though I fall, I always just tell myself, don't stay where you are. Try again. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. All right, thanks, Jasmine. Still to come, the NFL season kicks off tonight. The details after this break. This is a huge deal. NFL Sunday Ticket is back only with Ram Trio. All day football, all day Sunday. Enjoy all the benefits of Trio with a huge extra. Never miss a game with NFL Sunday Ticket included in your Ram Trio bundle. All you have to do is opt in. TV, phone, and internet starting at just $99. Call 601-8992 to sign up now. Visit www.rav.bs slash promotions for details. More milestones for Jazz Chisholm and the NFL season gets underway tonight. Marcellus Hall has more. Well, today a big day for football fans as the NFL gets rolling. First though, we take a look at Jazz Chisholm with even more big things happening as the Major League Baseball career continues against the Atlanta Braves. More milestones for Bahamian Major League Baseball player Jazz Chisholm. He and his Florida Marlins squad taking on the Atlanta Braves in Atlanta. Jazz once again starting at second base. Here we go, top of the second. Jazz with a deep drive to right center field. That bangs off the wall. Driving in a run for his first Major League RBI. Jazz cruising into third for his first career triple. Jumping ahead to the fourth. Jazz again with a deep drive to the same part of the field. This time the park won't hold it. A 403-foot blast for his first career home run. 
He would finish tonight two for four with two RBIs and a run score in a losing effort. Braves get the lopsided win 29-9. to Switching to football where the NFL season kicks off tonight with a big game between the defending champion Kansas City Chiefs and the Houston Texans. And like we told you, ref customers will be able to take full advantage of this season with the NFL season ticket courtesy of ref. Trio customers eligible to watch all the action on Sundays at no extra cost simply by opting in. And if you're not already a Trio customer, you can sign up today for just $99 so you can watch all your favorite teams all season long. So like we said, be sure to take full advantage of the Rev Trio opportunity to get your NFL season ticket, and we'll, of course, continue to follow on Jazz's career as his milestones continue to pile up. Reporting for our news, I'm Marcellus Hall. And that's a look at news. We throw it back to meteorologist Greg Thompson for the extended weather forecast. Thanks again, Kyle. I'm meteorologist Greg Thompson with your second look at weather. Satellite-wise, lots of moisture associated with a disturbance to the east of the islands, producing showers and thunderstorms across most of the island chain. National Hurricane Center watching this system, giving it a medium chance for formation over the next couple of days. Your boating forecast for all areas for tonight through tomorrow. Your winds will be out of the east northeast to east southeast, 10 to 15 knot seas running two to four feet over the ocean. Low tide will be at 8.51 tonight. Here's a look now at your national forecast. And now, a look at your extended forecast through Tuesday. That's a look at your weather. Make it a great night, everyone. Thank you for joining us for Our News tonight. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Kyle Joaquin. Remember, you can catch Our News on the Go, the Go Play app. Have a good Thursday evening, Bahamas.